إن الله لا يعجل بعجلة أحدكم وخلق الإنسان من عجل that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact you're rushing and you want the answer it doesn't, it doesn't make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rush the answer for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best for you so maybe when he doesn't answer your call he knows that is best for you so very important that you're gonna suffer and you're gonna struggle but you need to be patient to achieve your goal and that is only achieved through patience بالصبر واليقين تنال الإمامة في الدين with patience and certainty patience on what you're gonna face patience on the struggle you're gonna be experiencing patience on the harm that you will be inflicted with and with certainty and yaqeen and being certain of the victory and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wa'd and the mawud of Allah you should reach the leadership in the deen and this deen will survive that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 13 years plus one year in Mecca and one year in Medina he did not fight the kuffar even they wanted and they were asking for it for fighting we're asking they were asking we want to fight let us fight he says not yet not yet until the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down and when the order came down some of those people who wanted to fight got scared got scared <coughs> إذا فريق منهم يخشون الناس كخشية الله بل أشد خشية وقالوا ربنا لما عجلت علينا العداء كل متاع الدنيا قليل ولا آخرة خير لمن اتقى so when they were told that now it's time to fight a lot of those people run away they get depressed and they get stressed and now we're scared and they are fearing the people more than they fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى so don't ask for the test and don't ask for that because you might not even be able to handle you might not be so be aware and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you got what you need to strive and you need to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best you got the best you got because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts the best Allah wants the best from you and if you look in Ramadan and Ramadan is a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes us to us exposes each one of us to himself to show you that you can do it you can manage to come to the masajid you can manage to fast you can manage to wake up in the middle of the night to pray you can manage to make qiyam and your life still going the same way and you still managing between your life and your business and your family and yet praying to Allah coming to the masajid praying in the middle of the night and after Ramadan so it's a time where Allah exposes us to ourselves so we know we are capable and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us this energy but a lot of us don't take advantage of it and a lot of us are lazy and a lot of us depend on others so very important we cannot be like that that is why Abu Musa al-Ash'ari one of the great Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to fast كان يصوم حتى يكون كالخلال he used to fast so much that he will get so skinny like al khilan al khilan are the toothpicks if you can call it it's small picks small pieces of wood that they would clean between the teeth with فلما قيل له لو اجممت نفسك why don't you give yourself a break why don't you rest why you're fasting فكان يقول انما يسبق من الخير المضمره انما يسبق من الخير المضمره he used to say the only horse that will win the race, or usually the horses that win the race, are those that are skinny. Those that are light, they are the ones who win. The heavy, the heavy, a heavy uh, horse is heavy, can't run fast, so will not win. And because he understood that this life is a race, race, and you are racing, and you are competing. Rush, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rush to forgiveness from your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, المتنافسون. And for this, after he describes the Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because of this, because of the Jannah, because of what's the, the pleasure that is awaiting those people and the believers, let the competitors compete. وَيَقُولُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For something like this, after he describes paradise, and safety from the hellfire. He said, for something like that, 
let those who want to do, do. And let them strive. And let them work hard. So we need to work hard. That's why Rabbi ibn Khuthayn, rahimahullah, one of the tabi'een, and one of the most righteous of this ummah, a man, a youngster. You see, this is Rabbi ibn Khuthayn, was so into the ta'a and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the people in his town, say, they said, one day, نُرِيدُ أَن نُفْسِدَ الرَّبِيعِ نُرِيدُ أَن نُفْسِدَ الرَّبِيعِ We need to corrupt the rabbi. A man that is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his best, the people of Ma'asiyah and the wicked people and the Fusaq don't like to see someone like that. So even not leave him alone, they say we have to corrupt him. And this is an answer to those who are calling for democracy. And for those who say the freedom of individuality, they apply it on certain things and they don't apply it to other things. They apply it with the fusuq and fujur. Yani you, you see in Muslim world, you find ilmaniyin and those secular and those people يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِكُمْ But their hearts are not even your hearts. Their concerns are not your concerns. You find them. When a woman wants to dress, when they talk about the hijab, for example, they said, why you don't give the woman the choice? Give her the choice. That is her freedom. Why you force her to wear the hijab? Let her wear whatever she wants. And then when it comes on the other hand, for a woman who chose to wear the hijab, they start talking about it being a backward and being a habit from the jahiliyyah and a practice from the jahiliyyah why you are measuring with two different ways when someone wants to grow his beard they don't respect his individuality and they start attacking him terrorist uh, whatever fundamentalist muta'assid muta'assid whatever all that why you, you you make it okay on some sides and you violate your main principles on the other side that is the hypocrisy that they fall in. And talking about democracy, something I recommend that each one of us read, each one of you read. And I came across that research paper by a woman named Ch Ch Cheryl Bernard. And you can look at it, and it's for an organization called RAND, R-A-N-D. It's a report. And this woman is, is the wife of, uh, of Zalmai Khan, is that his name? The Afghani guy who, who was the ambassador for the United Nations and then ambassador in Afghanistan and then Iraq. That's his wife, a Jew. Okay? And uh, that report, this organization, the RAND, is specializing in producing research for the, FB, for the Pentagon. And this paper is about Muslims. Now you need to understand that the war is not on Muslims anymore. They had given up in the world and in this country. They had given up on changing the Muslims. They were able to change some. But they cannot change Muslims. Because they are shocked and they cannot fathom the fact that Muslims are returning to their deen more and more. So now the goal is not, that's it, we cannot change the Muslims. Now the goal is to change what? Islam. And that's what this paper is about. This paper is a research categorizing the Muslims. Six or eight different categories. Radical, fundamentalist, basic or whatever it is. Different levels until they go all the way. The last level I think, modern. And the goal now is to make Islam modern. And then for each category, it's a very, very interesting that makes you laugh. Very interesting uh, research or research paper. Every level of Muslims, they discuss issues. So they will have the level of Muslims, let's say, radical or super radical, radical, fundamental, less fundamental, a little bit more, funda whatever it is. And then the last thing is modern. That's on one, on one row. And then on the column under these things, the issues. Hijab, Jihad, uh, uh, following the Quran, following the Sunnah, or resources of Tashri'ah, these things. And then they will tell you, concerning the Hijab, if a person thinks about Hijab this, he's radical. So if a person thinks that Hijab is mandatory and the Muslim woman should wear it, he is radical. Throw across until they reach modern. What does the modern say? 
Say it's a math choice.